فعاش القلب إخلاصا وصرت تحومك الطير تحلق في ثقافاتي وتنهل من روب الخير Please consider donating to help cover our running costs and future projects by visiting www.muslimcentral.com forward slash donate Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين. My beloved brothers and sisters, we have a few minutes within which I will talk, and I have asked the brothers not to delay the adhan. As soon as the time comes in, we will call the adhan, and our success lies in fulfilling that salah on its time. Uh, the last time I came to this masjid, do you remember what I said? Anyone remember what I said? The last time I came to the masjid, what did I say? Anyone remember? Subhanallah. And I want to tell you something about who I am. Me. I am a nobody. Perhaps you are better than me. If you come to the masjid to listen to me, you actually need to come to the masjid to listen to Allah. You need to come to the house of Allah to build your akhirah, to build your hereafter. My brothers and sisters, I cannot even help myself. How will I help you? My brothers and sisters, people think, very high of someone who's a little bit popular without realizing that the high is Allah. Build your relation with Allah, you're not going to go wrong. When you come to the masjid, when nobody is watching and nobody knows and it is time of Fajr or it's time of Isha on an ordinary day and you're passing by and your heart is in the masjid, then you are a friend of Allah who... He will treat as a special treatment or with a special treatment on the Day of Judgment. It is known as a dhil yawm al qiyamah The special shade on the Day of Qiyamah because you used to come to His house. So come for Allah. Come for the sake of Allah on a regular basis. Whether there is someone speaking there or there is someone, nobody speaking there. You just came in, you smiled, you fulfilled your salah. You made the masjid alive. And then you walked away and you came back for another salah sometime. That is success. As for me as a human being, I told you just now, and I want to repeat it, I cannot even help myself. How am I going to help you? My help will come from Allah and Allah alone. Don't be deceived by someone who tells you, don't worry. Uh, for your Jannah, I guarantee it. What guarantee can you give me when you don't have your own guarantee for Jannah? Allah alone is the one who can give you Jannah through His mercy. And this is why when we do our deeds, it should make us humble. When we do more deeds, it makes us more humble. When we come more to the masjid, it makes us even more humble. Because we realize that we it's only the mercy of Allah that will take us to Jannah. It's only the mercy of Allah. That will take us to Jannah. But to achieve the mercy of Allah, you need to do one thing. What is it? Try. Keep trying. Keep trying to please Allah and Allah will be pleased. So, you know, I've been speaking the last few days. Various cities, various venues, various crowds of people. MashaAllah, tabarakallah. This is probably the last of the lot. And I was thinking to myself, I would love to see this masjid tomorrow morning at Fajr. I'd love to see it. That really shows how the heart and the condition of the heart is when it comes to the relationship with Allah. I ask you a question. If I was a person who could come to your house, and if you gave me a key to your house, and you told me anytime, come. And I came in 
when you were not there, I helped myself, I opened the fridge, I took out whatever I wanted, I put it on the stove, I cooked, I cleaned, a little bit here and there, I went to sleep for a while, got up, and I went off. What does it show? It shows that you and I are very, very close friends, right? Or we are related in a close way. Because I can come into your house, I can go out, I can eat with you, I can go out, I can do anything. And you, if someone says, where is this man? Say, I'm sure he's sitting with his friend at the house. They already know where you're going to be. When you have a relationship with the house of Allah, in such a way that you come in and out and in and out, and when someone says, where is the brother? Say, look, he's either at work or he's in the masjid. Then you know that now you have the friend who is definitely the owner of the world. You want to know how to be a friend of Allah? Come to his house. That's it. Come to his house often. Spend time here. No. Read Quran here, Tilawa here. Come. There is a serenity. There is Baraka. There are Malaika. There are angels. There are people. There is Sakina. There is peace. There is contentment. But we are searching for it everywhere else. We want to ask ourselves, why am I not happy? Why is there no contentment? Why no? Why no? The owner of all those things, to get close to him, you have to come here, but you are not here. Simple mathematics. One plus one equals two. That's what I'm telling you. Subhanallah. So at the time of Dhuhr, as you're going past on a Sunday, maybe perhaps in your mind there is a small plan. You know, I will pass by the masjid, I will read salah, then I will go. I will continue. You synchronize your day where you work around the salah. Now you're talking business. What is the point of the whole dunya coming to talk to me and to you when our connection with the house of Allah is almost zero? It's only Jum'ah and Eid, right? Jum'ah we are there and that too, the Jum'ah, am I right or wrong if I were to say many of us come quite late? Am I right? It's a reality, look we are nodding. It's true and I'm, I'm grateful that you are owning up because it's true, right? We come late for Jum'ah. It is the Eid of the Muslims in the week, Jum'ah, Jum'ah. We say, we greet people on the Friday, so many greetings but we are late for Salah. What was the point of it? The day of Eid, we greet people with the Eid greeting, but that's the day we commit sins. You worship Allah through the whole month of Ramadan, and in one day, the zina, the alcohol, the gambling, the whatever else, everything is committed on the day of Eid. All what you did in Ramadan, what was the point? What was the point? I see people who wear proper clothing through the month of Ramadan. The day of Eid is a day of nudity. Nudity, khalas. They are nude. So what, what happened in Ramadan? Was it just a show? Inshallah, we can change this. By the will of Allah. My brothers, my sisters, I'm encouraging myself. I am weak. I'm encouraging myself to read more Quran. Read more Quran. Go more often to the masjid, house of Allah. Spend time here. If you come to the masjid and you cannot wait to get out, there is a problem with your iman. But if you are outside the masjid and you cannot wait to get in, now you are a friend of Allah. See the difference. When you start your salah and you can't wait to finish it, there is a problem. But when you are not in salah and you can't wait to get into salah, now you are a friend of Allah. When you go into sujood and you want to come out so quickly, you have a problem. But when you are not even in sujood and you can't wait to get into sujood, now you are a friend of Allah. When we go to sujood, what dua do we say in sajda? Subhana Rabbi al ala How many times? How many times? Three times. I encourage you to say it five times. Is it okay to say it five times? It's okay. Some people say one time. Allahu Akbar, Subhana Rabbi al ala Allahu Akbar. They're up again. What did we do? We just bounce. Trampoline. Boom. Up again. Trampoline, jum, like this. Take your time, go down. Subhana Rabbi al A'la. This is for Allah. All praise is due to my Rabb who is the highest. All praise is due to my Rabb who is the highest. All praise is due to my Rabb who is the highest. All praise is due to my Rabb who is the highest. All praise is due to my Rabb who is the highest. Then you say, Allahu Akbar. I said it five whole times. Why? I want to add another two for the sake of Allah. It's not a bid'ah, it is a sunnah, which means you are allowed to add as many as you want. Add it a few more times. Take your time. Look, 
I want to end with one word because there is one more minute. The closest that a worshipper can get to Allah is sujood. أَقْرَبُ مَا يَكُونُ الْعَبْدُ لِرَبِّهِ وَهُوَ سَاجِدٌ The closest you can get to Allah is when you are in sajda. Right? The level of closeness of yours to Allah is also determined by how much you enjoy your sujood or how little you want to be in sujood. Did you hear this? The closest you can ever be to Allah is in sajda. The closest you can ever be in to Allah is in sajda. So if you don't like it in sajda, you need to work a bit more hard. If, if you are finding a problem in sajda, you want to get up quickly in sujood, you need to work on yourself. Please, my brothers and sisters, I promise you, whatever you have in this world, your job, your family, your this, your that, your wealth, your position, your power, all of it is going to go the day they bury you in your grave. Go to the graveyard and look at the names of the people. They had more than you. They were more powerful than you. They looked better than you. They had more wives and more children. They had everything. They are gone totally out. What will help them? How much sujood they made. That will help them. Right? How good they were as people. That will help them. That's why I'm telling you, Take a look at what I've said today. Short talk, but very, very to the point. Come for Allah. Spend time with Allah. Allah will spend so much on you. So much. Spend more time. Take it easy. Just go. Even if you are weak, even if you are sinful, even if you think you are a bad person, no one is too bad to turn to Allah. Just try it with Allah. Just try turning to Allah. Two raka'at of salah. Make wudu come. Go down to sujood. And just say, Subhana Rabbi al Oh my Rabbi, you are the greatest. Learn the meanings of what you are saying because if you know the meaning, you, you will enjoy the statement more. And when you enjoy it, you say it a few more times. Say, Oh Allah, spend a moment in sujood. And then when you come up, you feel so better for the sake of Allah. Your life will change. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant every one of us ease and goodness. I indeed have enjoyed my short stay here in this beautiful, is it a town or a city? It's a city, subhanAllah. It means it has a lot of people, right? City. It's a city of Newport, isn't it? And I don't know, it is very old, but they still call it Newport. Perhaps because the people are always refreshed, right? So may Allah bless you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all strength. Like I say with me, shaking my hand will never guarantee you a place in Jannah. Taking a photo with me will not help you in your grave. But if you are closer to Allah, all of the problems will be solved. So if I'm walking out after salah, if no one wants to take a photo and no one wants to actually get hyped up and push and shove about shaking hands, perhaps we can shake hands for the people who we are passing by as we are going. I'm one man, you are a thousand people. How can we shake everybody's hand and everyone gets excited and they, don't worry, make dua. I make dua for you, you make dua for me. It is the biggest gift you can give me. And the biggest gift I can give you, may Allah bless you. May Allah ease whatever difficulties you, my brothers and my sisters are going through. And inshallah, in this way, we will earn Jannatul Firdaus by connecting ourselves to none other than Allah and His Rasul, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabiyyina Muhammad.